Chibi, a true story from Japan. Chapter 1 One spring morning, a brown and gold duck flew over a skyscraper in Tokyo, Japan. Far below her, she spied a pool of water gleaming like glass. She dipped down and glided onto it, hardly making a splash. After a quick look around, the duck settled down in a clump of ivy by the pool and proceeded to build her nest. It didn't seem to bother her that she was in an office park in downtown Tokyo, or that she was only a stone's throw away from Uchibori Dori, the eight-lane avenue where 300 cars a minute roar in and out of the city. The duck went right on with her work. Soon the nest held ten ivory-colored eggs. The Okasan brooded them herself, turning the eggs gently with her feet from time to time so they would keep warm on all sides. Twenty-six days later, there was a commotion in the ivy. One egg cracked, and a wet little baby duck pecked its way out of the shell. Then another egg hatched, then seven more. Within hours, there were nine fluffy ducklings in the ivy, snuggled under their mother's warm brood feathers. It seemed as if the tenth egg might be a dud, but on the next day, it finally cracked open, and a very small and scraggly duckling pushed out of the shell. Okasan patiently moved the other ducklings about in the nest to make room for the last and tiniest member of the family. As soon as number 10 was fluffed out and steady on her feet, the mother duck led her entire brood out of the nest and onto the ledge above the pool. That was when the workers in the offices in Mitsui Office Park saw the ducks for the first time. The ducks caused a sensation. Word spread like wildfire. Eleven wild kamo are living around the pool? People began to visit the park just to watch the duck family and to take pictures of them. Among the duck watchers was a news photographer, Mr. Sato, who gave a name to the tiniest duckling. Sato-san named her Chibi which means tiny. Every day the crowd grew larger. People brought lunch in their kerchiefs to eat besides the pool so they could watch Okasan and her ducklings. Vendors moved in with hot noodle carts, carts of odin, which is steamed vegetables, and isobai maki, which is rice cakes wrapped in seaweed, and with ice cream and cake carts. Tokyo TV started to broadcast a duck watch on the evening news. School children came on class trips to see the Kamo family. Photographers came to take pictures. Sato-san was there every day. Soon, 4,000 people a day were visiting Mitsui Office Park to see Okasan and her ducklings. Chibi was clearly their favorite. Everyone worried about her. Being the smallest and youngest, she struggled to catch up with her brothers and sisters, who had already learned waddle, line up, follow the leader, and belly whopper splash. When Chibi finally learned to dive under the water to get moss to eat, everyone celebrated, Chibi, Chibi, they chanted. Sato-san took the first pictures of Chibi, bottoms up. One morning in June, Okasan hastily quacked quacked the ducklings together. When they were all in line, she marched them to one of the exits and right out of the office park. Sato-san and the other duck watchers trailed after her at a safe distance. When she reached the corner, Okasan stopped short, turned, and waddled all the way back to the pool, her ducklings right behind her. She, repeat, she repeated the trip seven times that morning. What is that crazy Okasan doing? People asked one another. Sato-san thought he knew. The duck family had out outgrown the little pool at the office park. But right across the street was an ideal place for growing ducklings. The great moat in the emperor's gardens. Okasan was going to take her family there. She was gonna. She was planning to cross the Uchibori Dori. But when? Nobody knew. Not even Sato-san. The police were notified to be on alert. 
They would stop traffic for the ducks. Satwasan and some of the other photographers brought sleeping bags and prepared to spend the night. Many of them had traveled a long way to capture on film the exciting moment when the Kamo crossed the eight-lane avenue. Night came and the lights went on in the city. The moon came out. Everything was quiet around the little pond. As dawn broke, the duck watchers listened for the first sounds of activity in the ivy, but the duck family slept on. At 11 o'clock in the morning, Okasan was still asleep, her head tucked under her wing. Chibi and the other ducklings were paddling around in the pool, chasing water spiders. Could it be that Mama Duck had changed her mind? Sato-san took out his shaver and freshened up a bit. He passed around a thermos of okcha, okcha. But, the hot, <laughs> but the hot green tea couldn't take away the effects of the sleepless night. Some of the photographers decided to leave. Others dozed off in camp chairs and sleeping bags to pass the time. Sato-san took pictures of his friends sleeping. At exactly noon, the mother duck lifted her bill, stood up, and wagged her tail. Was the bill or the tail the signal? The ducklings gathered behind their mother, Chibi first, then the others. Marching single file, they followed Okasan to the exit. But wait, she wasn't leading them to where the watchers had gathered. Okasan was heading for the opposite exit. Sato-san was the first to realize it when sh what she meant to do. Frantically, he dialed the police. Then, camera in hand, he clambered over the azalea bushes and raced along the divider to the other exit. The street crossing light was changing from Midori to Ak Akai, green to red. Okasan ignored it. Looking straight ahead, she waddled down from the curb. Chibi and the other ducklings did the same. At that moment, a sports car came speeding down the broad avenue. It was heading straight for the ducks. Sato-san, who was about to take a picture, dropped his camera and ran into the street. Waving his arms frantically, he shouted at the driver to stop. Tomate! Tomate! The car swerved. Brakes screeched. Police whistles blew. Flash bulbs went off. But Okasan paid no attention. Calmly, she herded her brood across four lanes, up onto the divider, then down onto the remaining four lanes. Within minutes, the Kamo family had crossed the wide avenue and reached the other side safely. Mama Duck flew into the moat first. She paddled around, encouraging her family to join her. One by one, they obeyed, tumbling over the steep rocky sides and plopping into the green water. Only Chibi was left teetering on the edge of the high wall. She quacked mournfully. Her brothers and sisters were already swimming away from her, with Okasan, who seemed not to realize that Chibi had been left behind. Sato-san called to the duckling, Go on, Chibi, you can make it. Now Okasan turned back and swam toward Chibi, quacking anxiously. Chibi looked down at the water. It was far, far down. The top of the wall must have seemed as high as Mount Fuji to her. She gave one final quack and... Splash! Chibi joined her family in the garden moat of the Emperor of Japan. That night, the front page of every Tokyo newspaper featured the duck story. Sato-san was disappointed that he hadn't gotten a picture of the Kamo crossing Uchiboridori, but he was happy that he was the one who helped the duck family to cross the avenue safely. That's the end of chapter one.